So then my friends, we've come a pretty long way now. We've implemented a lot of the game logic and we've also added a couple of nice animations as well. Next up, I wanna make a little keypad that's gonna sit below the grid and that's gonna show us what letters we've used and which ones have matched so far. So they're gonna be color coordinated just like the tiles on the rows up here. If you take a look at the official game site, you can see how it looks at the bottom after a few guesses. So initially all the tiles are a very light gray color, but then as you make guesses, any exact matches become green and any partial matches become yellow. Also, any letter that you've used that doesn't match go dark gray. So it's just another way to visualize what letters we've used so far in the game really. And in this lesson, we're gonna start this process by just initially making the keypad at the bottom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a keypad component. So new file inside the components folder, call this keypad js and then inside here we'll say rfc and tab to create a react functional components now the first thing i want to do is create some state for the letters themselves that we're going to output on the screen and we need a function to update these as well called set letters because we do need to update them in the future because remember each letter is going to have a color associated with it and if we make some guesses then those colors are going to change with those letters that we're outputting now, to begin with, we're going to set this to be null, and we're actually going to store all of the letters inside our data db.json file so that we can fetch them and then cycle through them. Now, if you prefer, you could just make a giant array inside this keypad component. That's entirely your decision. For me, what I'd like to do is just paste them all inside this thing right here. So we have a letters resource. So the endpoint for that is just going to be forward slash letters. This is an array of objects where each object represents a single letter and it has a key property, which is A, B, C, D, E, etc., all the way through to Z. OK, so we have all the letters there. We just need to fetch them from this component. And once we have them, we update the state set letters to be these objects right here. OK. So then let's do that. I'm going to say use effect right here. Click on this to auto import it at the top. And by the way, make sure you imported use state as well. Inside use effect, we need to fire a function. And this function is going to fire when we first load the component. So it's just going to have an empty dependency array right here. And inside we'll say fetch. And we want to fetch from, and it's going to be HTTP forward slash forward slash local host and it's port 3001 forward slash letters that was the name of the resource inside here okay so we're going to fetch them returns a promise so we tack on a then method which fires a function when it's complete and inside that function we take the response object now from that we need to pass the json so we say response dot json like so this also returns a promise Therefore, we tack on a then method again. We get back the past JSON. And what I'm going to do is just update the letters by using set letters. And I'm going to pass in that JSON right here. Well, it's not really JSON at this point. It's an array of objects. OK, then. so we have this right now. We've updated the letters. And when we have letters, we want to cycle through them and return a little key, if you like, or a little square for each letter. So what I'm going to do is delete this text and give this a class name here equal to keypad so we can style it later on. And then inside this div, we want to cycle through the letters, but we only want to do that when we have a value for letters. So we say letters, then double ampersand and then letters dot map. And we do that because initially letters is null. And when letters is null, we don't want to use a map method on null because that's going to cause an error. So we wait until we have letters, then we map through them. All right. So inside here, we get access to the letter inside this function. And what we want to do is return a template. So parentheses. And in fact, what we'll do is curly braces because I want some extra logic inside this function later on. But inside here, we'll return and then inside parentheses for each key, we want a div. And let's close that off as well. Each div needs to have a key prop. So the key is going to be just equal to L dot key. Remember, that was this property right here because they're all unique. So it doesn't matter that we're using the key property. They're all unique. So that is the key prop. And then inside here, we want to output the key as well. So L dot key. All right, and that's all there is to it as far as this component 
is concerned. We're going to style it shortly, but let's take a look at this in the browser. Before we do that, however, we need to uh, nest this component inside the Wordle component, and it's going to be underneath the grid. So we'll output the keypad component, which is this thing. Press it. It's going to auto import. We don't need to pass any props into it. We just save it. And now we can test this in a browser. All right, so in a browser now we can see all of those letters at the bottom. It looks terrible, but at least they're there. Now you might be getting an error over here, which is a 404 error for the letters. And if you're getting that, that's a JSON server issue. So if we take a look at the code, let me open up this again. If we go over here, we added these letters in, okay? Now, in order for JSON server to pick up that change, you have to cancel out of the current process. So where JSON server is running in the terminal, you can say control C, and then you wanna run JSON server again, as we did before. So JSON server, a path to the JSON file, port 3001 and press enter. And that picks up then the latest additions we've added to the file. So it creates an endpoint for this letters resource, whereas before it didn't have that. So if you've got an error in the console, make sure you do this before anything else, and then it should work. Anyway, now we've done that, let's try styling those letters because at the minute they look absolutely terrible. So what I'm gonna do is just copy a couple of rules from the course files over here, and then I'm gonna go to the CSS file, and at the bottom, I'm just gonna paste those in. So we have one rule for the keypad. We say max width 500 pixels, margin 20 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right. And what that does is kind of centralize this width of 500 pixels in the middle of the screen. And the keypad, by the way, was this div right here. Then underneath that keypad and then any div directly inside that, we style like this. So this is each key. Remember, each key is a div. So we say each one should have a margin of five pixels to space them out a little bit, a width of 40 pixels and a height of 50 pixels, a background of a very, very light gray, display inline blocks so they all sit next to each other up until the 500 pixel width that is, then they go into the next line. Uh, border radius of each one is six pixels just to soften up the corners and then a line height of 50 pixels. And what that does is make sure that the text sits vertically in the middle. So I'm gonna save this now and preview in a browser. All right then my friends, so there we go. There is the keypad and that looks okay. Now, if we try to put in a guess, for example, blame and press enter, well, we get the green here and the gray here, but none of these are colorized yet. So we need to do that in the next lesson. We need to make sure these keys are updated to reflect what color each letter should be.